Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I am Mike B, and today we're going to be talking about the topic of why they didn't use more camouflage in the European theater of operations during World War II, specifically U.S. and uh, Allied forces in general, but the U.S. was using camouflage in the South Pacific quite extensively, uh, specifically with the United States Marine Corps and attached Navy corpsmen and such. They had a camouflage poncho that could also be, you know, it was worn like uh, during rain, obviously, but you could camouflage positions and stuff, a shelter half, etc., etc. They also had the helmet cover fairly early on in 1942. And then they started wearing full HBT uniforms around 1943, and they wore them throughout. Now, if that was so widely used in the South Pacific, why wouldn't it be widely used in the European theater of operations? And we're going to be talking about the very, not well-known, but it's a pretty basic concept of why it wasn't worn, but you might not know that it actually was worn for a very uh, brief time right after the Normandy invasions, uh, D-Day, the only D-Day that everyone thinks of when they hear that well, phrase, even though D-Day just means the day that you're going to be forming an operation. The South Pacific had tons of D-Days, but uh, you, the Normandy invasion, June 6th of 1944. There were a few units that were testing out this particular frog skin style of camouflage. I don't know the exact nomenclature of what the suits were called or whatever, but they actually did wear these into Normandy. They would give um, marksmen or snipers this pattern. They would give riflemen this pattern, scouts. And they found out that in the fighting in northern France and France in general after that, the fighting was relatively close um, in woods and forests and in particularly in Normandy, um, hedgerows, which is you know, hedges that are thousands of years old, hundreds at least years old. You can't see through, they're very thick, and you don't know who's on the other side of that. You can't hear or see until you're right there. And the problem was that the uh, German military, particularly the, the Waffen-SS at that point, had so many different camouflage patterns that were similar to this, similar enough to the human eye, that in that split second decision to make that decision, whether you're gonna fire or not, or if that's a friend or foe, it apparently was either uh, enough of a concern or actually happened enough times where frat fratricide occurred or was a massive concern. Fratricide means friendly fire. And so it was, it was decided, I don't know exactly when after the June 6 invasions, but it was decided that a camouflage pattern was not a good idea because of the SS and even the, uh, the hair, the army. They had their own like splinter camouflage smocks at that point. They'd wear salt ponds as camouflage. And so it was easier to identify the enemy if they were wearing camouflage, you knew 100% of the time that that's, that's not your friend, right? But if you've got friends that are wearing similar enough camouflage patterns to like, now at that point they would have DOT-44 coming out with the 12th SS and uh, the 17th SS that was up there um, in Normandy, they were also sporting some DOT-44, but they also had the plane tree, which is similar enough. Uh, the colors scheme is a little bit different, but again, it's it's little splotches and it's, it's similar enough to where if you're in a high stress situation, is it really worth wearing the camouflage pattern or I don't know, whatever the decision making that occurred, uh, whoever did that, that was what they decided. I don't know if I agree with it or disagree with it, but that's just the way it was. So throughout the entire European theater of operations, camouflage is rarely seen being worn. Um, there are, I think there are a couple pictures of some British snipers that captured some SS uh, camouflage and used it for a static position, but they were also in communication and people knew that they were going to be there and that they were British. So things like that happened sporadically here and there, but for the most part, the allies were not going to be wearing camouflage patterns just because of that fact that the SS already had a monopoly on that and they had been using it since the thirties in the invasion of Poland and everything. They were wearing these smocks, this camouflage. And uh, so that's why the Western Front allies just generally didn't wear these. Now in the South Pacific, the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy, they were not wearing camouflage patterns. I mean, there was a couple experimental things that were um, with, their, with their paratroopers and stuff, but not nearly enough to make any bit of a difference. So at that, in that particular situation, the United States Marine Corps and the United States Navy had a monopoly and already had the upper hand as far as wearing camouflage, because then the Japanese, if they were to introduce camouflage, would face the same issues that the Allies did in the European theater of operations with the risk of fratricide. So again, it's a lot easier to see that your enemy is wearing camouflage and that you're wearing a solid color, I, most likely khaki if you're Japanese, the United States, the Brits wore, uh, well, the Commonwealth, I should say, wore khaki. A lot of the Allies wore khaki uniforms and the Germans wore gray and camouflage. So it was a lot easier to just say, okay, this is the way it is. This is recognizable. We don't want to have, you know, we don't want to have these troops going through more training to recognize which camouflage pattern is which and so and so so it just seemed to be a lot easier solution to just wear the, the rest of the solid colors for the rest of the war but continue to wear it in the south pacific where the united states already had the upper hand 
Now, what's interesting too is this is kind of I'll just I'll just talk about this and mention this. Maybe I'll do another video on this. Is going forward um, and also in the South Pacific, the Army really was not wearing camouflage at that point. So I don't know if it was an Army command decision or I don't know exactly how that uh, played out. But maybe I'll do another video on the intricacies of that if you like this subject enough. So let me know in the comments. Now, it's very interesting is moving forward to Korea, the Korean War. You still see U.S. Marines wearing the camouflage helmet covers, but they're not wearing the camouflage, the entire uniform. They're wearing all of drab HBT or herringbone twill uniforms. So that might be another idea for another video. So if you like either one of those, I'm going to shoot that grackle. You're done, buddy. Um, if you like this video and you like kind of the concept of it and you want me to make, you know, elaborate more or whatever, make sure you throw the comment in the, in the, the comment section. And if you want to support my work, if you like this content and my other videos and all that stuff, and you want to support me financially, you can do that a couple different ways. One, you can become a Patreon supporter. Link to that is in the description. You probably know the drill. Or you become a channel member. Uh, five bucks a month or more. By hitting the join button below, sorry. By, uh, five bucks a month or more on either support platform. Gets you into my Discord server, which is a really fun time. There's a lot of people on there, and we exchange a lot of cool information, a lot of cool videos. A lot. It's fun, too. It's just, you know, we got uh, you know, having fun on there, too, as well as, you know, posting things about you know camouflage and stuff like this i get a lot of video ideas for my patreon supporters that are on discord and my channel members that are on discord so just keep that in mind um if you can't support the channel financially but you'd still like to support my work somehow you can definitely still do that and i totally understand the financial part i totally get that so don't worry about that you can do what you know everybody else asks for but i'll just remind you like this video by giving it a thumbs up um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already throw a comment down there with what you thought of the video that actually does pretty well for the algorithm apparently um, and then just share this video out if you thought it was interesting or you thought you know you didn't know this or you don't think somebody else knows this and you think it's an important enough kind of topic i guess share it out it's fun it's interesting it's history we got to keep it keep it going so those are ways you can support my channel and if you don't want to support me I hate to break it to you, but you already did by watching this video to this point. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate everybody who watches, all my Patreon supporters, past and present. You guys have made a lot of cool things possible. And again, I keep saying it, but we got some really cool stuff lined up this year that's made possible with the help of crowdfunding. So all that being said, again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.